So we'll discuss a Minyani Purim. This Purim is next week. I guess that means there won't be a Shia next week. There will be, but it won't, won't be here. And so we'll dis- so the many mitzvahs on the day of Purim, the mitzvah of Kriyat HaMegillah, the mitzvah of the Suda, the mitzvah of Matanos Rav Yonim, and the mitzvah of Mishol Achmano. So I think we'll f- we at least we'll start off focusing on the latter, on the last mitzvah of Mishol Achmanos and take it from there. So the Megillus Esther tells us, Well, Mishol Achmanos ish l'reyehu, umatanaz le'avyonim. So in the Megillus, it tells us the mitzvah of Shol Achmanos and matanaz le'avyonim. And the Gemara tells us, Mishol Achmanos, minimally speaking, we do much more, usually. It's just two gifts to one person. And matanaz le'avyonim is you have to give a meal to the words of a meal to two different aniyam. And it's interesting to note that we always assume, we meaning the Hamonama, no one's particular here. I don't know if you do or you don't. When people think of the mitzvahs of Purim, somehow they think Kriyas Megillah, that's an important one. Shalachman, you know, I enjoy it too much. How important could it be? You know, my toes of Yonim, it's always important to give tzedakah. But really, there's, um, there's really interesting um, Dove Misharim, one of the actually later Achron, I mean, I think he passed away in 1962 and he was like one of the Gedolim in New York at that time so he points out and it's a macho, actually it's a machok is Harishonim as well in terms of what is the definition of Divrei Kabbalah is because we know something in that Torah comes from the Chumash something in Jabbat and like Hanukkah is post biblical post post prophets that didn't make the cut so that's clearly a pure Durabanan Purim is some type of in-between status of Divrei Kabbalah, the words of the prophets. Not Kabbalah, but Kabbalah in terms of, of Nach. So there's a discussion among the Rishonim. The Ran and Megillah talks about it, Yerushalmi, in terms of is everything in Nach by definition as it, it says the status of Divrei Kabbalah? That's how some, that's how some Rishonim write. Others say no. A davka has to be v'derach sivoy. It's not enough just to mention it. You have to mention it. I have to do it. So according, if you if you assume, if you assume like the first child would make a difference, they'd both be on the same level. But if you assume like with like the second approach, so it doesn't say anywhere explicitly you have to read the Megillah on Purim. We learn it out this karim and asim, and we learn out from the Gemara over there in Megillah. We have a mitzvah Megillah. It doesn't say explicitly you have to read the Megillah in the Megillah. So it would come out interesting according to that sheet to that Mishal Achmanas and Matanas Laviona would be Divrei Kabbalah and Kriyat Megillah would only be a Dindra Abana, probably the Sud as well, which is learned out also from the Aniskara Manasim. So it would come out that if you work with that shot that Matanas so either according to any explanation it's equal, according to this it's even greater mitzvah. So let's focus on the Divrei, the certain, the definite Divrei Kabbalah mitzvah of Mishal Lachman and the Matanos of Yonah are going to come together. So, what is the nature of this mitzvah? Obviously, the Megillah tells us to do it. We're going to do it. We're very good robots today. How high? How much do I have to eat? What do I have to do? But what's the nature of the mitzvah? Like, why? What did they have in mind? The the Nevi'im or Chazal when they gave us this mitzvah of Mishal Lachman. So, there's basically two schools of thought. And there are others, but they're known as the Trumas Hadeshen, who's quoted a lot in Shulchan Aruch by the Ramah. And another one is probably not quoted in Shulchan Aruch ever. He's more, he's more well known from Friday Night Kalbach. The Manas Halevi is the Sefer, and it's the one who wrote the Luchol Dodi, Rav Al-Kavad. So he, it's hard to say it's a Machokas when you have a Posik versus someone in Kabbalah. But well, these are the two schools of thought, and we'll see how they both fit into the different halachas, we'll quote. So the true Hadeshan we'll begin with. The true Hadeshan says that, you know, why the, you know what the purpose of Shalach Manas is? It's kind of like a Heksher Mitzvah. It's not because it's a Mitzvah in its own right, but it's really a din in the Suda. That we know on Purim, we have, a, in contrast to Hanukkah, according to the Rambam, we have a Chiyav on Hanukkah as well. But we passed, and there is no chiyav suda. There's no obligation to have a meal on, on Hanukkah. We passed, and there is a chiyav suda on Purim, and the different reasons why. Now that it's a different discussion. So, so since we have a mitzvah of suda on Purim, 
So therefore, one of the mitzvahs in order to ensure that every Jew has food to eat at the Suda, yeah, they gave us a mitzvah of Mishal Achmanes. In fact, that's what the Chassan Sofer writes. That's the idea behind, behind Matanas of Yonim as well. Uh, that's obvious, but now it's Rav Yonim, that you give the poor person, he has a, he needs a meal to eat, so you have to make sure you give two poor people, make sure they have enough, uh, enough to eat. Again, as I say, whether you give them enough money for how he tees, I guess it's closed down now, but 398, that's, I'll, I'll leave it to your discretion. But you have to at least go with the minimum. You have to be able to have a nice Purim. And of course, Purim is, you, if all the days of the year, that probably has the biggest obligation to have busser. So therefore, you should try to make sure you can afford a meat meal with the money you're giving him as well. So that's the true message. In fact, it seems to be the sheet of Sarambam. Because the Rambam, when he talks about Talacha and Mishal Achmanos, first he, t- he talks about when he's talking about the laws of the Suda. And interesting, he says, and then after he talks about you have to have a Suda, the Chain, he says, Chayib and Shal Achmanos, which the implication of the Rambam is that you have Shal, you do the Shal Achmanos after the Suda. The meaning usually isn't that way. We usually have the Suda, and the people make a mistake waiting to five minutes before Shkia. That's the, really, you're supposed to finish the Suda. But with Mako, at least if you have the majority of the Suda, Bayom, you can finish it at night. But really, the majority of the Suda should be in the day. So our meaning is, again, it depends unless you have two meals. If you have a meal, what I used to do when I was um, with my friend um, Rabbi Simon, who's a Rosh Hashiv at YU, we used to go to the YU cafeteria and buy each other breakfast, and we fulfill both our mitzvah of Shalach Manas and the Suda at the same time. That's the Gemara in Megillah. Now, so, so therefore, if you have a suda in the morning, you are following the Rambam. But most people have the suda. If they only have one, they have it later on. And again, but either way, as long as you do it during the daytime, people make the mistake. Well, it's not. It's no practical difference because they're usually giving 50 anyway. So they give some at night because that's when they're going to see the. I guess if you're going to see the person, it can't hurt to give them at night. It's not going to real. It won't count as shalach manas because you can't give it at night because. It's connected to the yom, and the mit- just like the Gemara says, if you have a suda balayla, you know, you to, even though there are poskim who say you should have a suda at night, but doesn't not to the exclusion of a, nothing, not to the exclusion of the suda during the day. The day is the ikir, just like many people make the mistake of kriyas megillah that they many people come to the nighttime kriya, not to the daytime, and when the daytime is the ikir kriya, yeah. Do you consider what the criteria is that makes it a suda? Well, in terms of what, do you have to have bread? Is that what you mean? Well, what, what, I mean, if you just have a normal breakfast, what? <coughs> yes, no, it's a bit, uh, I that, mean. Can you just say that's my suda? I mean, you, I mean, obviously you can, but it's like any, like any mitzvah, you could do it, you know, bit, you know, it's like on Shabbos. Well, if you just have lecha mishnah, you have a little piece of fish, and then that's your suda Shabbos. Mm-hmm. You didn't do the mitzvah in its ideal, you know, in your, it's part of it is have an onig and there's a mitzvah of simcha on Purim, so obviously you should have, you know, maybe breakfast for some people is their favorite meal. It depends what you're having. You have, like, if you're having you French toast, a, you know, a cheese and onion omelet or everything on top, then we could discuss that. They go on locks. If you have, but definitely, but in terms, strictly speaking, make our dinner, it would definitely be a suit. It's a shayla actually whether you even need pas. The minig is we definitely have pas on Purim, but it's really a pas you don't have because you'll find out very, with a simple question. Maybe the answer is not simple, but the question is, if you forget al in, in Birka Samazan, do you have to go back? If you have to go back, that means you had a That's the rule of thumb in general. You just have to know what the halach is. So that's why by Shabbos, the halach is Friday night and Shabbos, the second meal, if you forget Ritzay, you have to go back. Yet by Shalosh Judas, we Paskin, you don't have to go back. I, I thought you have to have three meals on Shabbos. So you do. And according to many, you should have them. According to everyone, L'Chadchilo, you should have bread the third meal. But since there are those shittas that say, Yotze B'Dyeved, with not having bread, so therefore we, so therefore we'll make it when it comes to benching over, or we are not repeating it, however you want to look at it, and we don't repeat, if you forget, we'd say Shalosh Judas, keep on going. And same, and same thing, Yantiv. Yantiv have a of Suda, you have to go back. So, so that's why Rosh Chodesh, you wouldn't go back. So the question is, a Pashish, you would not go back. So in terms of a of Pas, that's a discussion in the Achronim. Everyone agrees you should have Pas, because that's what we call a Suda. But technically speaking, you could, buy, you could even fulfill your Suda's Purim, maybe even without bread. Now, the reason I ask is, yeah. I know that <coughs> I'm going to start my Suda 
I'll barely be able to wash before, I, I mean, generally barely be able to wash before, before ski, you know, just in time to, uh, so, so given the, you're, you're really supposed to have the bulk of it during the, the day, so am I better off having in mind that my real suda is breakfast? Yeah, well, there's no, I mean, you don't, you, obviously, yeah. When you have breakfast, you have them on this issue suit that's Purim. In fact, who says you can't have two of them? And then, obviously, you'll have another suit that when you start, so you won't, so therefore, won't be, you know, so that if you're going to do that, you're probably better off having a suit in the morning, right in the, and then you, you know, you go to your mitzvah suit this Purim, have a nicer breakfast than usual, and, you know, and then, and then hopefully you'll make it before Shkia, and you'll have a, another suit, you know, another suit this Purim. But in terms of that, so, just, so therefore, the Rambam puts it in the, together, so we could bring a geographical raya from the Rambam. From where the Rambam puts something tells us a lot about the nature of the halacha. The fact the Rambam, he didn't coincidentally, you know what, I have no way to put shalach, well let me check, throw it into Hilchah Suda. No, the fact the Rambam puts it in, in Hilchah Suda tells me that it's a din in the Suda. And therefore, we have this Yisod that shalach manis is like the true misadeshen. And we find it, um, an interesting, just like Shalach Manas goes together with the Suda, as we'll see, Kriyasa Megillah and Matanas Ravion always go together. As the Gemara tells us um, that, let's say, when Purim falls out on Shabbos, so we don't read the Megillah on Shabbos. And it can only come out in Israel today, in Eretz Yisrael, the way our calendar is set up. And they have what they call Purim Mishuash B'Yushalayim, not this year, but they spread it out over three days. So there's a discussion among the posts, but many say, so whenever you're, how do you know when to do the Mitzvah Sayom? So whenever, whichever you're going to pick, but Kriya, when you, whenever you're going to pick Kriya Samigila, that's when you do Matanas Rav Yonim. Because, and whenever you're going to do Shalach Manas, that's the same day as the Suda. So they always put those together, as the Gemara says, Inayim shel aniyam, the poor people are waiting all year round in order to, um, they're waiting for Matanas Rav Yonim because, probably because practically speaking, all of the young Tovim are not going to have any money for them. But Purim is one of the few chances they have to actually come to Shul, I guess they could come during the week, but on a Yantip when people come and get a big crowd, so on, so on Purim, so much of the other reasons the Gemara gives about Zayur the Rava not to do it, on, not to have the Purim on, not to have the Megillah on Shabbos, but the Gemara, it's not about, it's not the Bali Musa talking, it's the Gemara, Enayim Shalaniyam, because of the, the poor, they're looking forward to Megillah all year round, to disappoint them like that, it's definitely taken into account, and we don't read the Megillah on Shabbos. In fact, interesting... Is it, a, is it an individual choice of which day to choose, or is it a community choice? They want to see the one to show us today as opposed to tomorrow. And we mean the case in the Purim issue, in which the case of the Purim yeah, without well, you know, I mean, it's not no, it's, it's not a personal choice. Whatever the you know whatever the minig is in Yushalayim at that time, you know whatever the, your local post tells you, but it's not a matter. Oh. I mean, are, right? That, I'm, you know, I'm not sure if there is a straight minig today, but if there was, you'd, we you know you know we can't change. You know, if there is a certain minig when they do things, you know. Yeah, I was going to ask because then. You're, when you're having your suit, but didn't when the onions having your suit. Oh, yeah, no, right. Yes, yeah, so I'm just saying, whatever you're going to choose, I assume in your shrine, once they pick whatever the minute is, everyone's going to do it. I mean, in terms of machok is among the post game, what should be, but whichever way we come out, that's what, that's what we keep doing. Interesting, um, that's how some point out along these lines, there's a minute as well of um, getting dressed up on Purim, wearing costumes, masks, etc. What's that all about? So Pashtas, it's based on the Nafakhu, the reversal, everything's different, we dress differently, etc. But others point out, Rav Zalman Margolis has a beautiful explanation along these lines. He says, since the Yushalmi writes that there's a whole discussion regarding Matanas of Yonim, not for tonight, but you could probably catch the share on kosher too, but then what's the nature of the din of Matanas Rav Yonim? Is it a regular din of tzedakah all year round? Like this, but it's just extra tzedakah, because, or no, it, it, it's not just the classical din of tzedakah, it's a din of simchas purim, etc. So either way, the Yushalmi writes that by all year round you have a right to go, to check into it. You know, let me read your sheet. Is, is the Ani serious? Is he really poor? Does he fit the criteria? of the definition of tzedakah, because I'm giving tzedakah, I want to make sure I'm giving it to someone who fits that criteria. But on Purim, you don't ask any questions. Any money that sticks his hands out, you give them. So the, obviously the minute is, we know, my tanas Rav Yonim, it's people go around. So what was that based on? 
to, not to embarrass the poor. It, it should be that way, and like anything in life, you get used to it, but you should, you should be embarrassed if you have to have a handout. It's not the ideal way of living. So therefore, in order not to embarrass the Ani, so if everyone's wearing costumes, no one knows who anyone is, so that's also where the Minig Yisrael came from about getting dressed up. So getting back, so that's the, so that's the true Mesadeshen, that basically it's a din in the Suda, we have Shalach Manas because we have to ensure that we have enough food for the Suda. The Manas Halevi has a totally different approach. He bases it based on the Gemara in Megillah. There's a lot of Agarata. The base of the Gemara about, there's a whole Mesech, this Megillah, but really only the first parrot talks about Purim, and even within that, it's only the first, I don't know, seven, eight, nine blot, it really Hilchitz Purim. The rest are um, Agarata. That's why, um, that's why Rav Shechta always likes to say that there's more Shtikl Torahs on the three blot on Hanukkah and there is on the whole Purim, because Purim is only um, like, you know, one parak. So either way, the Gemara and the Gaiata talks about Haman trying to convince Achashverosh, come on, let's kill the Jews. So Achashverosh said, are you kidding me? I'm not starting up with the God. What could happen to these other kings? They thought that the Jewish people were over. It had to do with the Nebuah for 70 years, when exactly it was. They clearly got it wrong. And Achashverosh didn't want to make that same mistake. So Parvah said, well, you don't have to worry. The God of the Jews hates when the Jews are fighting among another. And the Gemara makes a drasa, yesh no and they're fighting among another. He says, you're right. God hates when the Jews are fighting. I'm safe now. I'll give you, a, I'll give you the green light. And Haman comes along. A hashem gahavu is called Yehudim Taf and Nashim. So we see the purpose, the, one of the reasons behind the Xerah was because the Jews were fighting with one another. So if the, if the Xerah was based on us fighting, so how do we reconcile it? How do we misaken it? by Shalom Yisrael. So we have to go ahead and foster relationships, certainly with our friends, but even someone who we had a little run in with, someone we don't get along with, you have to, you have to focus on them as well. So Shalach Manas isn't a din in Suda per se, it's a din in Achtos, it's a din of Abbas Yisrael, of Shalom Yisrael. So that's the, so those are the two schools of thought. You have the Chuma Sadeshan, the Halakha, it says it's a din in the Suda, and you have the Manas Halevi, who says it's a din in Shalom? So Mainaf Gemina. What's the practical difference? Either way, you got to do Shalach Manas. Whether you, whether you like the Manas Halevi's approach, you like the Chuma Sadeshin, it's not going to, well, maybe it would change, but what, either way, you have to do Shalach Manas. But what's the practical difference between the two? There's a very interesting Ramah in the following Shiloh. It's not really so Lamaisa because we give more than one. We usually give 40, 60, 80, who knows. But if you only, assuming you're only giving one, and this is it. So, so per a morning, you go over to your friend, and you say, you know, Freyo Chapurim, Chag Tzanech, whatever you say, I'm Purim, and you give him your Shalach Manas. And he says, you know what, just look inside. No, my wife will kill me. Look at all, I have 50 sitting on the table. Thank you so much, but I'm not going to take it and he refuses to take it. Am I Yotze, the one who offered it? Am I Yotze the Shalach Manas? Am I Yotze my mitzvah? So it would depend on this Chakir, it would depend on this Machokis, the Trumas Hadeshen and the Manas Alevi. If it's a Din and Suda, no matter how good my intentions are, you can't eat a thank you. So according to the Trumas Hadeshen, you're not Yotze, because obviously if it's a Din and Suda, there's nothing, you didn't actually give anything. But according to the Manas HaLevi, you definitely, you would say the whole point was to be Mar B'Sholem. By you offering a, a beautiful Shalach Manas, you definitely are Mar Yotzeh. So that'd be enough. Interesting, the Ramah Paskins in Shulchan Aruch, on the Shaila, Yotza, he says you Yotzeh. So at least, in this area, he seems to work with the Manas HaLevi, that you Yotzeh, you know, unless you want to argue that if it's Roy Lusuda, maybe it's an Apapashas, it seems to be this issue here between the Trumas Hadeshen and the Manos Halevi. And in fact, um, there's a whole interesting uh, uh, Binyan Tzion. In fact, the question is, why is this? So he asked, where does the Ramah know this from? How does the Ramah, how does the Ramah know? In fact, this could be, this Machokas, Trumas could be a Machokas in the post, and whether it's true. There are those who say, you're not Yotze. So what's in the Kudas, um, where is the Ramah, what's the source of the Ramah? That he, that he says that if you're Mochel, it's still a go for me. So let me ask you something, a, Jew, a Jewish answer, I'll ask you another question. What about Matanas Levionim? 
you offer the ani food or money like the Rambam writes and he's, whatever the reason, he's too proud, he says he has enough, he doesn't, the bottom line, he doesn't take it. He doesn't like what you gave him. He, he wanted the ribs, not the chicken, or whatever the reason is, but he didn't take it. So my yotze, I offered him my tones who have yonim, but he says thanks, but no thanks. So the luck is, you're not yotze. Unless the ani takes it, you're not yotze. So what's the, so what's the chi? How does the Ramah know when it comes to Mishal Achmanah, so the Pasuk lumps them together? So how, why is it according to the Ramah that by Mishal Achmanah I'm yotze, and by Matos uh, I'm not? So the Binyan Tzian writes, it's Meduyik in the Pasuk. Because what does the Pasuk say? U Mishloach Manos Ish the Mitzvah is a Mishloach, to send it. U Matanas Rav Yonah, but the Matana is always Miyad Riyad. And the in fact, the Binyan Tzian goes up, we don't have to say Pasuk like this Binyan Tzian, he goes so far to say it's perhaps you have to send it out Yidei Shliach. Since the Pasuk says on Mishloach, if you give the Shalach Manas, then maybe perhaps you're not Yotze. You have to give it to a third party. So we don't pass them like him, but it would depend, of course, on this issue is, 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 is giving to a third party better or worse. That depends on the person, depends on the society. You have to know who you're giving to. Some people say, a third party, oh wow, that must be really important. He said, I don't say, what, am I not important enough for you to give it? You're sending someone else? So you have to know, obviously, especially with the Manos Levi, you have to know, you better be Barba Sholom for Sholach Manas, not Marba Eva and, and hatred. So therefore, so that they would depend on the circumstance whether you should do it, you have to know who you're giving to and the society around you. But either way, that's the Binyan and see, We don't pass him like him. We pass him, you are Yotze if you give it to, you can give it to a Shriach, but if you give it directly, you Yotze as well. So that's what the Binyan Tzian writes. That's how he knows it. But where do we know our peace? Where else, where else do we find the Raya for the Ramah? So there's an interesting Gemara in Megillah. The Baya, the bottom of Zion and Aleph, and the top of Zion and Bez. Basically, the Gemara talks about someone who gave a very big, uh, who gave a barrel of wine and a big piece of meat, whatever the details are, whether it was prime rib, or a skirt steak, I'm not sure, but it was a big piece of meat, and it was a nice kegel, keg of wine. And, and, he, and he wanted to, um, and, he, and he, you know, he gave it to this, um, he gave it to this person, and, and the Gemara says, Kiyanta bino, the different gears in the Gemara, but the Gemara says, Kiyanta bino, Mishalach Manish, this guy was poor also who he gave it to. So it says, you fulfilled, you've done well, my friend, you have fulfilled the mitzvah of Shalach Manish, and Matanas Lev Yonim. So the Shail is, there's only one person here. What, we, we, we know that for, um, for, you know, how could you do, how could the same gift be, let's assume, in, you know, Matanas Lev Yonim, how he gave to someone else, to him and his wife maybe, but let's put that question aside. But how could you give the same thing? But Shalach Manas is, Shalach Manas is, how could you fulfill both? So obviously the Achronim Rai, because that's the Pshat. We see, that's where the Ramah got her from. Here's the Shalach Manas, thanks but no thanks. So I'm going to say, okay, take my son as Gavionim. And therefore, you see, yeah, that's the Pshat in the Gemara, you fulfill Shalach Manas and my son as Gavionim. That's how some, some Achronim weren't along, you know, along the line. That would be one of the rites for the Ramah. So either way, that's the, that, that would be another Naf Kamina. So you offer this person Shalach Manas, who happens to be an Ani. He says, thanks but no thanks. So I'm, okay, I'm Yotzi my Shalach Manas. Now I give him now the honey, I give him toast. He has his matanas gravionim and he takes it. So I fulfill my that's how I can fulfill my mitzvah. How could the Gemara say he fulfilled with one giving? The Gemara says he fulfilled Shalach Manas and Matanas Gravionim. How could that be? So that's what some want to say. You know, some have a gear so they take he didn't fulfill both. But I'm saying working with the Shita, if it's in well with the Shita's harama, that you could be mocho on Shalach Manas, Shalach Manas, but not on Matanas Gravionim. That's that's one, that's one nafkamina. Another nafkamina is, what about you get back, you put a morning, you come back, and you find a beautiful shalach manas sitting on your doorstep. So either the wind blew the person's name off, or you never put it on. And the question is, is that person yotze shalach manas? And if he doesn't know where it came from, um, are you yotze? It was interesting, one time actually, uh, um, I think someone, 
I think I came back once per night. I'm not, even, I'm not even sure what it was exactly, but I found like a pizza box on my door. But someone, it wasn't like a pizza. I didn't even say where it was. I didn't know how long it was sitting there. And forget I didn't eat it. Cause it wasn't sure about kosher, if the animals ate it. And I found that later on someone left it there for um, shalach manas. But it wasn't, but it wasn't Purim. Else I would have, you know, I would have realized it was shalach manas. But either way, so what happened? So. It, again, it could, it could depend on this issue. According to Truma Sadesh and Yotze, if you're going to take this food now and you can use it for the Suda, who cares who gave it to you? As long as I'm using it for the Suda, it's a go. But according to the Manos Levi, perhaps it's not good because maybe he knows someone in the community likes me, but he has no idea who. And therefore, perhaps the mitzvah is that you have to show you have a, you're endearing yourself, you want to make friendships. So perhaps according to the Manos Levi, you would not be Yotze. Another nafkamina perhaps perhaps would be is what about the case of someone gives you uh, comes someone gives you a nice uh, no frills little tiny box of raisins and this lousy MC diet cola for shalach manas nothing personal no and and let's say he gives it to you so. Are you are you yotze? So there is a discussion in the Rishonim whether you have to give a coin to the person's, you know, if a person's a millionaire and they give you this thirty, you know, this five dollar, not five dollar, a dollar, whatever it's worth, a very minimal. So are you yotze or not? So that could be this issue. According to Truma Sadesh, in the bottom line, you could still eat the raisins at the meal and you could still drink the diet cola or the regular cola, but. But according to the money of slavery, you're clearly not trying to make any friendship here. It doesn't look you again, I'm talking about when money's not an issue and you're not going out of your way. It's kinda of like, okay, I need you to be Yotzi my mitzvah, okay here, I right, just take it so I can forget about Shalach money and the rest. So therefore perhaps you're not. What about the reverse? I know um let's say someone you get a UPS delivery, that's a separate child, let's assume you dropped it off and it was delivered, you brought it that day, it gets in the shayla, if you sent it before getting it, we'll keep it simple here. Someone comes to your door and they have a nice big box they give you, okay, and you open it up, it's a Mac, it's in the new MacBook Apple laptop, and by Purim, iPad 3 is coming out on Tuesday, the rumor is, so by Purim you might, and he has the iPad 3 in there, if not, it'll be the iPad 2. Are you Yotze Shalach Manas? With, um, or a nice bicycle, even a car, whatever you want. So it would depend on this issue. According to Truman Sadeshan, no, you can't eat a car, you can't eat a computer, or be, you can get an app and find a kosher restaurant on it, so I'm not sure if it counts or not. But if you can't eat a computer or any hardware, so you're not Yosef. According to the Mother Salevi, it's a din of sim, a din of Sholem, you're clearly showing you want to be this guy's friend. So according to the Mother Salevi, you would be Yosef. Alaminik is, to give food, and the Bhagavad Rav even says not only food, but we should give, we should try to give food that one's going to use at the Sudha, not just food that, so therefore, some, you know, some post to Mamakmi, again, not make her, make her identity, you don't say any food. What but about you should, all these cards people say? Yes, I'll get to that in a second, yeah. You can't eat a card, but I'll get to that in a second. But some, but, but therefore, in terms of, you should try to give chop liver, okay, maybe cholesterol, maybe we put a cholesterol pill in there while you're at it, maybe fish, send some soup, some meat, food that you can eat during the soup, that's the, that's what some posts can say should be the hitter. But the bottom line, any type of food works. So many people today have, the, you know, it's very popular. Of course, they'll claim it's the Rambam, and maybe it is. But like anything, everything in its proper balance. But many people, you mean someone just, they they come and give you a card instead of any shalom. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, they send right. cards. Right. Right, so you go mm-hmm. putting the card in the shalach manas, you can get both things. And let's assume many people today, the yotze, the minimal shalach manas, and they want to rely on the Rambam, whether they know it's the Rambam or not, but the Rambam writes, that if you have extra, you have to do all the mitzvahs. But let's say you have extra money. Should you be marbe and shalach manas, or should you be marbe in matanas lev yonim? So the Rambam writes, the Iker Simcha isn't to fill up our belly with food, although it doesn't hurt, but the Iker Simcha is to help the Aniyam, to help the more vulnerable, and if you have extra money, give it to my child, so that is all true. So of course, like anything, it could be taken to the extreme. So obviously, number one, there's different issues in terms of, there's a Chinach issue, 
that in terms of, you know, at least to me, I was always brought up, it was a whole big thing, you make the shal, it's exciting, you make the shalach money the night before, you go around, you deliver, you, you get either get, some people give you money, I know that was based on just, when people give you, it's just fun, you know, shalach, and then, and then obviously leaves you with good memories. So there's, there's a chinek part that we're losing today, either people have, like they make a donation to the shul, and the shul gives one shalach. Again, me'ikra din halacha, Again, you have to weigh convenience versus other factors, but that's one issue. And the other issue is we lose, we lose sight of the human element. No matter how much, people like getting gifts. Not a matter of needing, it doesn't have to be an expensive gift, it doesn't have to be a fancy one, but there is something about when you give someone a shalach manas, you, there is this type of shalom areas that the manas are levy. So there's nothing wrong. So, you know, if the person gave out a hundred shalach manas already, give me a card, but I'm just saying I don't, so there's nothing wrong with giving out cards, you know, but it shouldn't be instead of the shalach manas, you know, it could be with it and uh, I, I'm agreeing with the Rambam, you should give the extra money on shalach manas, on Matanus Rav Yonah, but don't, you shouldn't neglect shalach manas either. If you, find, if you find an organization where the cards are based off of the tzedakah, and that would be, like, be the full track factor, right? You can get, you can donate money to the tzedakah and you can get the cards to get for shalach manas. So most of your money goes to Matanus Rav Yonah, but you can use the cards also for the... No, but you put the cards in the shalach manas, you mean. No, you still have to separate, give, separate thing. But you still have to give food. You still have to give food. Yeah. So you also no, like, you know, that's, a, no, that's, a, that's fine. That's what I'm saying. Many people do that. Prices, they say instead of giving out shalach manas, you should just... Like no, many people. No, many people do both. That's, yeah. I give out because they. I want because my wife wants me to get rid of the card, so I deliver shalach manas with the card. But I'm saying is, but that's just to know that don't be upset by shalach manas doesn't isn't twenty dollars. You know, I still want to show my friendship, but I gave a lot. Of, I gave the money to. Uh, you know, that's okay. I'm not saying okay. someone just giving out cards and not really doing. Yeah, you know, what did you I want to say? Wonder, but maybe according to the Manas Alevi, you say that that would be considered fulfillment of the mitzvah of Mishloach Manas. Also, if but ultimately the purpose of the card is for friendship. So you're telling that person, I am your friend by having made a donation in your honor. Would, would that even work? No, because it's not good. Even. Because even the, the I mean, it's the same as the iPad. It's the same. It's the no, same. but that, but you're giving something there. Do you want to say it's a gift like a Adam yeah. Chashuv? No, yeah. So yeah, I agree. No, I'm not disagree. I think one could I, I, one could make the case according to the Manos Levi that it might be. Like, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't rely on the Halach Lomaisa, but I definitely agree. Alpi Sfara, one could make that. But, right, uh, but not yeah. Halach Lomaisa. Yeah, yeah, but okay. yeah, within the realm of again, but that, you're assuming that person's happy. You're doing it. Maybe that person wants to show Ach Manos. How do you know he was happy you're giving to tzedakah? I don't know if Give tzedakah on your own here. I want my shalach manas. No, no, but that's not the question. No, no, the, the, the guy it is if you want to make, if you want to be marvish shalom and that person wants to shalach manas, I'm not going to be happy if someone gives me a card saying they gave to the food bank. And let's say, he's, so let's say this far as the other way, where the, where the, where the, where the family is more than happy not no, to collect. No, okay, yeah, so then, then okay, you have, to, so again, you have to know who you're giving to or not giving to, yeah. No, I'm not saying, I'm not like saying no, but I'm saying... It doesn't sound like that, because what they write on the card is, is, is problematic. Yeah, they say, you, uh, it's, it's, very, it's halakhically problematic to say... You're not the kind. It's a very nice thing. Exactly. But, but, it, but it's, you know, but... You know, I guess, it, I guess it depends what they mean in lieu of, but right, but I'm right. saying have you have to be in the card, yeah. What about the union of Mitzvah Hayom, and you give the money to the rabbi for Matanot Le'avionim a week before, or until this day, so that he has time to... Yeah, but that's okay, but Matanot Le'avionim, the point is, as long as the Ani gets... The, on, the, on the, yeah, the Ani has to get the money. Matanot Le'avionim, it's the... Is that say you give to the... Jewish Food Bank or whoever you're giving to, and they'll make sure that's what they tell you is I'm giving you the money today, tomorrow, or whatever. You can give them any time you want. That's not the mitzvah. The mitzvah is, the ma is when you give it to them. So therefore, the gift should be given to the ani on that day. So that's fine. Yeah. So, uh, to the, to, to those are you know, so those are the two schools of thoughts: the Trumas Hadesh and the Manas Halevi, with some interesting um, nafkemi as halacha. Where does this? So really, if we go back, um, we can maybe perhaps we could find a deeper. So we could find an earlier source to this true Hadeshin as well as the Manas Halevi. In fact, it's something they say over the name of Rav Nachem Zember, who was, um, who was killed by the Nazis not that long ago. He says as follows, it's a Gemara Megillah. He doesn't say this, but the Gemara Megillah says that students ask Rav Shimon Bar Yochai, Rabbi, t teach me. What brought about the Churban? What brought about the Gzair of Haman? Lahashmid, Lahab, Lahab, what did the Jews do wrong? We don't usually, 
What's the purpose of Nach? You learn the story, the, the Navi gives you Musi, you rebuke, you learn and you become better. But here they didn't even tell us what they did wrong. So what's going on? What, it doesn't say it anywhere directly in the Megillah. So what did we do wrong? So, so of course the Rebbe was into cutting edge modern pedagogue well before. And he said, tell me what you think. Let me hear what you have to say first. So I'm not giving you the answer. So this, you know what we think? Um, Shenenu misudas achashverosh that they, benefit, they benefited from the Suda of Ashkazer. <coughs> Notice that it doesn't say they ate at the Suda. They did eat, but it doesn't say the sin was they ate. Because Mordechai was there, Keton Ish Ve'ish, it was glad, kosher, everything was kosher there. What do you mean, Because why was Ashkazer making this party? He's making this party, and he took out the Kalim from the Beis HaMikdosh, and that's why we read it to the tune of Eicha. He thought this is the end, this is the 70 years this is great, let's make a party, the end of Judaism as we know it, no more Beit HaMikdash, this is the end. And what happened? The Jews said, wow, look, you see those wings, those honey garlic, those ribs, those fries, you got to try the egg rolls. They were so, they loved the Suda, and then, I mean, Suda Sachashveri, imagine the scene, let's say, I, I always go back to something during my time, son of Sam Killer in Brooklyn, that he was basically went ahead and he killed a bunch of people, so let's assume, I don't know if he did this, I'm making this up, but at the end of the year, he made a party for those, and he invited all his friends to the 25 people he killed that year. And he put pictures up of all his victims, and that everyone's having a great time. And imagine on one of the friends or relatives happened to walk in by mistake to this party. They'd be appalled. They'd run out. They'd start screaming. They'd scre- the Jews are sitting there, and then, that's what it was. So he said, very good, very good students. But the only problem with that answer is it only would have affected the, Shu, the Jews in Shushan. Only the Jews in Shushan ate at the Suda. So therefore, you know what? It must be because of something else. And then he told them the answer. It must be because the time of the Bukhanetzar, they, they, they had the whole Selim. It was a whole discussion. Was it Avodah Zarah, not Avodah Zarah? And he went ahead and they bowed down to the Selim. So I, even though they were forced, so that's what the Gemara says. So, that, so God didn't really execute on the plan either. Haman just made the Xerah, but it never led to fruition. So too, it goes, so it goes back to worshipping idols. So the Rabbi Nachem Zeba points out, so what do we see from this Gemara? The two basic um, sins that brought about the Xerah of Gahashma Gahara is called Yehudim. It was Shenena Misudas Achashverosh, that was bad enough, except it was a technical reason Shushan was only affected, but if not, it was bad enough that it would be. And secondly, Avodah Zorah. So Rabbi Menachem Zema points out, this is the Yisod of the Trumas Hadeshen and the Manas Halevi. Why is the Trumas Hadeshen, why does the Ramam say, why is the focus on Suda? Because if the whole thing was Shenen and Misudas Achashverosh, what's the Tikkun Achei, how do we rectify it? By being making a Suda's Mitzvah. We have a Suda's Purim, Shalach Manas, everything's included in the Suda, and we turn it into a Suda's Mitzvah. And the other sin was Avodah Zarah. So what's the cure for Avodah Zarah? So we know for many times that God, when you, when you sin by Adam Lamakam, not that we're recommending it, but God has a lot more tolerance. He says, don't worry, okay, give them another chance. But when they sin by Adam Lamakavero, you know, zero tolerance on drugs, zero tolerance on sins ben adam lechaveiro, that I can't stand. That's what was with the, the famous Mesha Chachma, the contrast between the Dor HaMabel and the Dor HaFlaga. The Dor HaMabel, well, nektam zardinam ela alagzela, because on, on the, they used to steal from Western Neshava Pruta. And uh, so when it comes to ben adam lechaveiro, that's it, I can't stand, I'm destroying the world. But someone's shooting arrows at him, he laughs at you, but he's not concerned when, you start, when you're fighting a war against God. And many other examples we find that when the, even when the Jews were doing very well, but they weren't Matziach in battle because they were fighting among another, but even during times when they weren't good, but if they had achta, so God had a lot of tolerance on them. So we see the, the, the tikkun for, for Avodah Zarah is, is Avas Yisrael, is Sholem, and that's the whole purpose of Sholach Manas. As we pointed out, uh, the whole Manas Levi is the harbor of Sholem, and that's what the Gemara says, Yesh to Am Echad, Befuzer. Achashverosh was afraid to start up with the Jewish people. Oh, the Jewish people are fighting with one another, I don't have to worry, he knew, he knew the secret. 
they are big maminim. The, all these the Risham during that time, they, you know, we wish we were close to the, have the Hamuna they had, that they have Esav as well. He might have been a Russia, but he definitely, imagine being so, would you be so upset if you missed the bracha from the Rebbe, like Esav was? His father, he missed his wife. If he doesn't believe, who cares about the bracha? Esav did believe other things he did wrong that, you know, we're not going into now. But that's the concept here. It's Avodah Zara. So in order to fix Avodah Zara, you have to make Atachdus Yisrael, Avas Yisrael, and get together with your friends and make new friends. And those do we find these two schools of thought of the Truma Sadeshen, that the purpose of Shalach Manos is for the Suda, and according to the Manos Levi, the purpose is for Shalom, we find it rooted in the Gemara already, that these two issues, which are then Suda, so therefore we want to make a positive Suda, and as well with Avodah Zara, we make Shalom, and that's what I pointed out before, and that's the whole concept of, as we mentioned, that, that even when Purim falls out on Shabbos, so we don't read the Megillah on Shabbos, because the poor people are waiting all year round to, for the Megillah so they can get the Matanas of Yonim. And, and because of the sensitivity to the poor, the Chacham is saying, no Purim today, we're going to have it on Friday, because we want to make sure you give the poor people um, what they have, and that's how, and that's how Rev. Margolis explained the, the meaning of costumes on Purim, because since you have to give to everyone who sticks his hand out, not to embarrass the poor, it's all about sensitivity and avas, ava and shalom ayisol, and that's what the, and that's what the two mitzvahs go together. Meshalach manes ishlurayu matelas of yonim, that is the chas and zovim, they're both really all part of the same mitzvah. They're both mitzvahs to enable to have food for the suda, as well as um, you know, having Avas, you know, having to create Avas Yisrael.